Anthony, are you still in your room? If you've got time to bang away on the PC, why don't you at least go down to the unemployment office and look for work? Come on, Anthony. At least give me a reply. What is it, mom? Can't you just talk to me directly? Why use the line? We're in the same house, for God's sakes. I'm using line because you get upset when I knock on your door. I thought you'd appreciate the gesture. To be honest, I wish you would just stop messaging me with useless comments. Besides, I'm really busy with this deadline. I need to focus on this. The deadline for what? Probably something about a game event, right? No, nothing like that. I can't believe you. You quit your job all of a sudden without a word, and since then, you're stuck in your room. I thought I explained it all to you a hundred times while working. I won an award for the book I wrote, and now I'm working on a new novel. I've come far enough that I'm confident I can make a living as a novelist. I got so busy with the writing that I made the decision to resign and put my full effort into writing. I showed you the book that I published, right? Yes, but the name on it was different. That's just a pseudonym, a pen name. Yes, well... You certainly got an imagination. But you really shouldn't perceive your hobby as actual work. As I said, it was a hobby before, but now it's work. How many times do I have to keep repeating myself? And as proof of that, after I resigned, I never once missed paying my fair share of the expenses. You're probably just taking it out on your retirement pay. So you had better get a real job before all that runs dry. That's why I keep... I don't want to hear any more of your excuses. If only you were half as good as James. He's your younger brother, and he's out there making money, even while he's studying abroad. And he still manages to send some back to me. But you? You haven't given me a dime once and spent all day in your room only coming out to eat and use the bathroom. It's like you're just freeloading in my house. How can you say that to me, Mom? I still share the house expenses. I'm in my room all day working. If you don't understand, then don't say anything. How dare you talk to your mother like that? What did I say wrong? Other people's children are out there working at the company while my child just stays in their room playing games all day. Why can't you be more like your brother? What a burden. You don't listen to whatever I say. Yeah, right. And like I said, I have a deadline. Leave me alone. I really need to focus. I'll give you a time limit of one month. If you don't listen well, I have some ideas of my own. You do understand, right? We need to talk. Anthony, answer me now. What is it this time, Mom? You do know that I'm currently out of the house. Yes, I know. First, you're stuck in your room for days. Then suddenly, you're out somewhere wandering around. Who knows where you are? As I said, I had a meeting with my publisher downtown. The meeting was early in the morning, so I stayed at a hotel the night before. Oh, such an imagination. It's like you're some famous writer or something. It's not imagination. I really am. I'm actually getting paid to do this. Well, that is all very nice. But anyway, I thought it was a good opportunity since you were out. Good opportunity for what? What do you mean? What I mean is, you don't have to come home anymore. What? Like I said one month ago, I said if you didn't get your act together in one month, that I had ideas of my own. You do remember that, right? So your solution is don't come home? That's right. Mom, that's a bit drastic, isn't it? The reason you feel it's drastic is that you didn't seriously consider my warning. 
Well, okay, but if I'm going to move out, I need some time in preparation. There's no need. I had already cleaned out your room. Huh? Wait. Cleaned it out? Yes. Cleaned out. I had the garbage collector come in and take it all. You've got to be kidding me. Do you mean everything? Including my PC? And all my notes and documents? That's right. Everything. Are you out of your mind? All that stuff? It's all your imaginary world. It prevents you from living in the real world. I have to do this so you won't get delusional anymore. Are you insane? My job requires that I use a PC and a laptop. There were countless files and documents for my latest novel in there. How could you? I wish you would have a little consideration for your mother, having to go along with all of your delusions. Are you saying I'm delusional? Anyway, I changed the lock on the door. So even if you come back, I won't let you in. You're evicting me and telling me not to come back home. You're unbelievable. Is this all just you? No, your father feels the same way. He said you're over 30. Stop sponging off us and get a life. Dad too? Unbelievable. So that's the situation. Your father and I decided to grit our teeth and kick you out of the house. This is all for your own good. You'll see. Freeloaders are not welcome in our home. So that means we cut all ties. You guys are okay with that. Huh? What do you mean? Goodbye. Miss Audrey, are you available for a chat? Of course, Anthony, good evening. I appreciate you attending the meeting this morning. Are you confident about meeting the novel's deadline? Well, that's the tricky part. Is something wrong? It's a bit embarrassing, but I've been kicked out of my house. Oh my goodness, really? I believe this is the first time I'm sharing this with you, but... My parents strongly opposed to my decision to quit my job and pursue a career as a novelist. Goodness, I had no idea. I tried explaining my perspective to them, but they think I'm living in a fantasy world. Their ultimatum was clear. Get a real job or leave. While I was out, they cleared my room, including my PC, along with all my notes and documents and threw them out. That's terrible. How could they do that to you? Don't worry. Fortunately, I have all my current documents on my laptop, which I have with me. Well, that's a relief at least. But, Anthony, that means you don't have a place to stay. You're right. I'll stay in a hotel for tonight, and then I'll start looking for an apartment. I'll need to buy all sorts of household items, kitchen supplies, a bed, everything. I understand. We'll consider all of that while planning our schedule. I genuinely apologize for this inconvenience. No need to apologize. Also, there's one more thing. What is it? We're approaching the publication of your new book. How about we set up a book signing tour? What do you think? A book signing tour, you say? It's a great opportunity for your fans to meet and get to know you better. It might also provide a chance for your parents to see what you're achieving. I see your point. I'll also make an effort to help your parents understand your aspirations. If your book becomes a success, eventually, they'll become aware of your accomplishments. It's all about timing. I suppose you're right. But first and foremost, we need to find you a new place to live. If you're comfortable living near the office, I can contact the nearby real estate agent. We have a good relationship with them. That sounds wonderful. I just hope I'm not causing too much trouble. It's no trouble at all. In any case, get some rest tonight and we'll catch up again tomorrow. Thank you so much. Good night. Anthony, it's been a while. Um... Who, may I ask, is this? It's me. Your mother. Yeah, right. What do you want? 
What do I want? Nice way to greet your mother, huh? We haven't heard from you in a while, so we were worried about you. How are you? Are you eating properly? You kicked me out without warning, and now you're worried if I'm eating properly? We had to do it. I hope you understand. But it was for the better. Better for what? You know it was painful for us. But I think we made the right decision, huh? So, you really did become a novelist. Where did you hear about it? From James. He told me. Apparently, he is a big fan of yours. He talked about being very happy because his brother was his favorite author. He also said that your novels are so famous that they are published abroad. Oh, really? Glad to know that. Yes! I was so shocked when I heard you really did well. I'm so proud of you. I suppose my decision to kick you out of the house and then forcing you to make it on your own really did wonders. What are you blabbering about? I decided to become a novelist four years ago. Huh? Four years ago? But you were still working at that company then. I was working and also working on my novel. My writing gradually gained momentum and I even won an award. So I figured I could make a living as a novelist. And so I resigned and started doing it full time. Oh, really? I had no idea. Why did you just say so? I told you a million times. You didn't hear me out. Not even once. You told me I was delusional. You just wouldn't believe me. Really? Did I say that? Anyway, now that you're a well-known novelist, I have no complaints. Uh, you guys kicked me out right when I was starting to really take off. Oh, yes. When do you plan to come back here? Huh? Like for Christmas, Thanksgiving, you know, during the holidays. Of course, you can come back anytime you want. Maybe you could come back and start living with us again. Why would I do that? Why not? People leave home all the time, and at some point, most people return to visit their folks. We are family after all. Family? Families don't do that to each other. You say I'm delusional and a burden to my family. You dumped all of my stuff and kicked me out of the house. And you said I never had to come back. Well, as I said, it was a painful decision. But it was for your own good. I just want to help you become better. Look at how you turned out. So you're saying that throwing me out was your way of motivating me to become a successful novelist. Is that it? When you had all my stuff thrown out, my documents and my notes were gone. It's a miracle my first novel got published. If my publisher hadn't stepped in to help me back then, I wouldn't be where I am today. And when my publisher called you to explain the situation, you said you wanted nothing to do with a delusional son and just hung up on her. So where is the support and motivation you talk about? Yes, well, that was, uh, I was, a. Uh... I provided an opportunity for the book signing. Huh? Book signing? When I heard that you became a successful novelist, I was elated. I told all of the neighbors and friends about the wonderful son I had. What? Your father told all his colleagues at work too. Well, then everyone suddenly asked us to get your autograph. I have a total request of about 50. 50 autographs? You have a lot of fans. Awesome, isn't it? So that's the situation. Could you have 50 signed and ready by this weekend? Or even better, autograph books. I don't recall ever giving you permission to solicit fans. Huh? Do you know how selfish that sounds? But it's only 50 autographs. Pretty easy to do in one sitting. It's not about the numbers. But that's actually a lot, you know? Besides, my publisher advised me against sending out autographs at random. 
It devalues my name. But you know, it's a request from family. Family? You never even listened to me. Or much less believed in me. Treated me as if I were a burden on the family. Well, as I said, it was painful. On top of that, you threw my stuff out without a second thought. Family? I finally thought you believed in me. And you go out and blab as if I was your precious son. Gather requests for my autograph and call yourself my family? Give me a freaking break. But Anthony, son... Please, don't call me family. Or your son. But I already told everyone I would get your autograph. Just tell them I refused. Just tell everyone that you never believed that I would amount to anything. Threw all my stuff out in the trash. And that you kicked me out of the house. That's just a mistake. I can't say that. You don't have to deny it. Please, Anthony. If you don't show up, they won't believe me. I also promised to get autographs for James. And if I can't do it, he'll be really disappointed. None of my business. As for James, I'll send him my autograph. But the rest is not my concern. That's all I gotta say. Please don't contact me again. Goodbye. I'm your mother. Why don't you listen to me? Wait! Anthony! After that, my folks continue to contact me relentlessly. I blocked him online right away. I also plan to change my smartphone pretty soon. I heard they also tried to contact my publishers, but as they were aware of the situation, they handled it accordingly. I thought that was the end of it, but apparently, my mom falsified my autograph and distributed it to her friends, saying it was genuine. Eventually, people found out it was fake, which led them to learning about how they treated me. I later heard from my grandma that all the relatives gave my folks a severe dressing down for how they treated me. My dad couldn't hack all the whispering and rumors at the office and eventually quit out of frustration. I wonder how he's doing now. But I completely cut ties with him and I plan to focus on my work from now on. At this point, I'm firmly on the path to becoming a successful novelist. The only family member I maintain a connection with is my younger brother James. He truly stands out as my most dedicated fan, offering unwavering support in everything I do. It's a real stroke of luck to have a family member who continues to stand by me through thick and thin.